Hi, and welcome to my show. I hope you enjoyed our series on F. Lee Bailey. I'm so proud to have been the last person who interviewed F. Lee Bailey before he passed away a few months ago. And I appreciate that uh, Rob Baldacci and my law partner, Ken Elshuler, came on to discuss uh, their memory of F. Lee Bailey. And uh, we were both mentioned in a magazine called Preferred Magazine, a worldwide magazine, uh, in which they did an article about F. Lee Bailey and quoted me in that article. And I'm proud to say that F. Lee Bailey was a friend. Uh, but today, I introduce the second longest friend I have had in my life. Uh, this gentleman has been my friend uh, since the second grade, uh, beaten only by Don Drewin Standish <clears throat> and Marty Hawkins, Martha Hawkins, uh, who I've known since the first grade. Uh, Jim, Mighty John Marshall, welcome aboard. Thank you, Jerry. It's great to be with you. Uh, you're going to enjoy uh, listening to Mighty John because he uh, is considered to be uh, perhaps one of the best uh, disc jockeys in the history uh, of Maine. But with him today is a gentleman I just met uh, whose resume reads like a who's who in America. Uh, Mark Stitham. <laughs> I did it. Uh, you did it. Mark, uh, you have had such experience uh, ranging anywhere from being a doctor uh, to um, a, a television star uh, to also being on Jeopardy. And I'm going to start off with that because <clears throat> my other show, Me on Five, is now running with what I call, who I call Jeopardy Jamie, who won twice, but you went on Jeopardy in 1987, correct? That's correct. And did you win? I did. Uh, <laughs> they actually uh, do uh, five shows uh, on Tuesday and five shows on Wednesday. They do three in the afternoon, a supper break, and then two at night. And so I came in after the dinner break. You never know. They, 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 they tried to mix it up to see who's going to be the best, most exciting. Uh, so I, I, I won uh, the first time. I won $10,100, about $21,000 a day. And I, uh, I lost the second one. Uh, so I just changed my jacket. It's not right, the next right. day. You know? yeah. so, uh, so the adrenaline just drained out of me. Now, I will tell you, if you'd like to hear, uh, the Final Jeopardy I won on and I do. the Final Jeopardy I lost on. Yes, I want to hear it. Okay. Well, the first one, uh, there was a dentist from St. Petersburg, Florida right. uh, that had been the champion. He had won $20,000. Again, a good sum back then. And so the category was U.S. Um, presidential elections. And, you know, they, they've got that Merv Griffin composed theme song. Da, right. Da, da. It's yeah. only 30 seconds long. Right. And uh, it goes by pretty fast. And in the old days, they used to say, put down your pens, put down your pens, with Art Fleming back in New York. But with uh, now it's all electronic, so they just cut you off. So you're, I, I was running out of time, but I did this. And it said the only two presidents to win 49 out of 50 states. Da, da, da. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so if you can do it, you know? No, not even close. Okay. Well, I knew right away Nixon. Because, okay. uh, yeah, because Nixon and McGovern, remember? Right. Uh, only Massachusetts was from McGovern. And the bumper stickers were, don't blame me, I'm from Massachusetts. Remember that? <laughs> uh, and the second one, do you know who this? Reagan? Yes. Reagan? No way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, well, I've, My told, hero. I've told him before. Okay, it, it, after Trump. But anyway, so, uh, no, Reagan uh, beat Mondale in yeah, 1984, right. yeah. who took Minnesota as the favorite son. Yeah. So anyway, so I finally get it, and I, I win. And the, the uh, Phil... You guys, the, the dentist's name was Phil. But anyway, he goes, um, and Alex Trebek, you know, he's beloved now because he's dead and all this yeah, stuff. Well, he's kind of a smug Canadian. He was. And he, he would make fun of us uh, during the thing. <laughs> You're the only person that's ever said anything negative yeah, about Well, it. I'm telling you. We're going to have to cut that. <laughs> no, no. No, no. I mean, I'm sorry he's dead. Uh, well, so but he is, No, but he's a, no, he was a smug guy. Okay. A Canadian that we let come down, make millions. You try being an American <laughs> actor, go to Canada, get on a Canadian. No, forget it. Right, okay. But anyway, yeah. so he goes... Uh, uh, so, so Phil said uh, Reagan, or Nixon, he said Nixon, and FDR. And so, so Alex goes, oh, you blew it. Yeah. You forgot that there were only 48 states back when FDR That's was. That's right. Yeah, but I mean, he's making fun of the winner. And goes, oh, wow. So Jeez. Anyway, so okay. I got a new champion. And of course, when he introduced me, he said Mark Steithen, because Johnny Gilbert he prides himself on that. He came up to us and ph phonetically, how do you pronounce your name? I go, Mark Steitham. He did it. From Kailua, Hawaii. Mark Steitham, a physician. And then at the end, so, uh, you know, he introduced me and he goes, uh, Alex said, 
Mark Steinman was saying that right. I said, yeah. So 20 minutes later, which is all the show takes with all the commercials, right. he goes, and we have a new champion, Mark Stephan. <laughs> I'm just shaking my head. You go, oh, yeah, I can't say thing. Yeah, I got yeah. no, sorry, wrong guy. Alex, That's hey, he Alex. I'm a smug Canadian. Yeah, well, yeah, right. I call him <laughs> <now, laughs> camp. But okay, so here's the second one. So the, the so the 20 minutes later. Yeah. Now the, I'm I, again. I'm in the same position. I'm 5,000, and the guy leading is 9,000. I've got a double, which is the same show, yeah. the first show. I've got to wager everything, and the guy's right, got to yeah. miss it. Yeah. Okay. So I wager everything, $5,000. I mean, it's monopoly money to me. Now, the category here is U.S. currency. And the answer was the only U.S. currency to depict an event. Okay. Okay. Da, da, da. Now, okay, the 50-cent piece with the landing on the moon, that's no, not no, currency. No, no, that's no, coinage. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So anyway, a uh, perfectly legit question. The answer is the $2 bill. But because in 1976, at the Bicentennial, they replaced Montpelier on the back, Jefferson's home, yeah. with uh, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Right. But I, it, it was 11 years later. I had not seen a $2 bill. You know how they were unlucky? People tore up <laughs> in corners. So anyway, so I put down a $500 bill, knowing that wasn't circulation. And Alice goes, well, Mark, as a doctor, you are used to the big money. Just have to sit oh there my and God! No, he's a smug guy. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for well, all you Alex Trebek fans. Well, Mark, th thanks for putting down Alex Trebek so my show is going to be hated. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so, 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 I love Alex. So, 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 yeah. so mighty, mighty John, we we got a minute and a half left. Right, that's right. <laughs> that's why I brought him along. So I won't have to do it. Yeah, you didn't want to. So you brought him so you wouldn't have to it's talk. Like I interviewed Bob Hope. I said, Bob, is there anything you want me to ask you? Don't ask you. So yeah. Just say, Bob, how you doing? Says, okay. I'll take it from there. <laughs> so, that's right. And I said, well, Bob, how are you? And he talked for 30 minutes straight. I never said another <laughs> word. He said, thank you for having me on. He was gone. Ma, uh, you know who can do that is George Mitchell. Yeah. So when George Mitchell's being interviewed, he, he tells him, he says, just give me your questions, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you my answer right now. And he's off the cuff. Does it? He's unbelievable. Um, uh, Mighty John, you were known as Jim Fury to me, which to me is a movie star name. Yeah. And yet you get to the WGY in Bangor, which was my favorite station when I was at Orono High, and they changed your name to, to, to John Marshall. I'm they didn't the like Jim why. Fury. What? I'm the reason why. He, he thinks he's the reason why. He thinks I know you tell I'm me, the reason why. You tell me who's the okay, reason you why. You want to tell the story, and then I'll yeah. tell the real story. No. Well, uh, yes, I get, they gave me the name John Marshall. It was Bill Moyes who yes. had it. Had a bunch of names from the Dartmouth radio station where Mark worked. Oh, okay, that's he where Mark. Them off. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, he had nothing to do with it because Moyes. Well, no, because was I gave Moyes the uh, job lead at WGY. <laughs> well, no, anyway, they wanted to sue me when I left GUI because I stole that name. That's so I'm going to tell them, no, it was Mark who stole it. So now, <laughs> now they can come after Mark. No, now they won't that. that. It was Moyes. Yeah. No, he was a son of a gun. <laughs> anyway, he ripped off our jingles. John Marshall is this boring lawyer in Burlington, Vermont now. Uh, it, you know, I haven't seen him since college years. But the point is that he, no, he ripped it off. He ripped off WRKO's format. Remember? Now yeah, radio. Yeah. Uh, the Drake Chenault. So uh, thanks, Mark, for getting me a suit on this, uh, on this public <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yes. But anyway, they said, you know, ah, Jim Fury, that's, now I'm going to tell you a great story. That sounds a little phony for radio, so pick one. <laughs> but the only thing they had, they had John Marshall, and I thought, well, how can I beef that up? So I said, well, I came out saying, this is John Marshall ruling supreme in the afternoon, because... John Marshall was the first Chief Justice of that's the Supreme right, Court. That's right, that's right, yeah. Uh, and the other guy there was Rick Starr. That was yeah. his real name. That was his real uh, name. Rick Starr. And they gave him the name Bill Summers. I said, Rick, <laughs> there's, not a, there's not a better name in radio than yeah, Rick the, Starr. Yeah, yeah, right, Rick Starr. And it was Rick that gave me the mighty part. So oh, yeah. That's how that happened. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. one of the, the, my, my favorite stories that you told me when we were at lunch because I love meeting celebrities, and I've talked about meeting Priscilla Presley. I spent two hours. But, folks, this story, which you're about to hear from Mighty John, to me is one of my favorite celebrity stories. Tell us about you meeting Elvis Presley and his only main appearance on Augusta. <laughs> I just love this. Go ahead. That was at the Augusta Civic Center. Yep. Uh, it was, I believe, a Sunday afternoon. Yep. And I had the last seat next to the stairwell where Elvis was going to come up. Yep. And the dignitaries in the area, and I'm not sure what city they were from, uh, about five of them all dressed up like they were going to a grand ball, yeah. head for the back door, and there's a bouncer standing there. Yeah. And he says, can I help you? Well, yes, I'm so-and-so, and, -so, and this is the uh, councilman so-and-so, and we're here to <laughs> present Elvis the keys to the city. The bouncer said, 
well, thank you, but uh, I'll take it back to him. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 we want to meet Elvis. Yeah. I see. He says, no, nobody goes backstage. And uh, he got really adamant after a while. He said, we're going backstage to meet Elvis. And the guy says, you're not going backstage. He says, I have the power to shut this show down. And the bouncer said, see that mic up there on the stage? That's live. Go ahead and do you it. You go up and tell the people, <laughs> they're not going to see Elvis <laughs> because you can't get backstage. <laughs> So anyway, the music starts up, yeah. and I'm sitting in that chair next to the stairwell, and he's standing as close to me as you're sitting to me. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. and I look over, and I go, Elvis. <laughs> and he goes, what? <laughs> well, uh, I can't think of a thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was gone. <laughs> he was. So that was my brief encounter with Elvis. You know, that was yeah, very uh, memorable. Uh, Mighty, the reason why I love that story is because it, people have the chance to embellish their lives as yeah. they go on. <laughs> and you could have said, oh, Derry, Elvis, oh, my God, we sat around, we laughed and yeah, joked. Yeah, no. And, <laughs> folks, I, I started this off by telling people how close I am to Bobby Rydell, one of my dear friends, and Brenda Lee. And, and, the, uh, and uh, uh, Mighty tells me the story about Elvis. But, Mark, I want to get back to you because... Uh, among your many qualifications, a doctor, all these things you've done, you have also been on several television shows that we're aware of. And one, in, in, after the year 2000, you, you've been on Hawaii Five-0. Yes. Uh, and, and, and speaking parts, right? You're not just walking, no, 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 walking no, through a actually, store. No, 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 no. I had a very nice part in... It was a uh, pineapple. <laughs> yeah, in, in season three of the re rebooted uh, 5 -0. The renew, The new 5-0, uh, right. So yeah. that was 2012. Which is very good, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank uh, you. I, yeah. I played a... This is great. Um, uh, because I played a judge involved in a prostitution ring. Wow. Yeah. Type casting. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is that I was 62 at the time, and the thing is that this woman pretends to be a therapist, a psychologist, but she's really uh, running this the hookers. Right, yeah. Anyway, so, so all these guys, judges and doctors, say to their secretary, I'm going up for my hour of therapy. And they go, oh, get laid. So anyway, so the point, <laughs> yeah, no, I, oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, right, okay. I'm, that's okay, that's all right. Yeah, right? That's, yeah, uh, not, yeah, yeah anyway, it's so, anyway, so the thing is that, so Dano asked me, he goes, uh, uh, he plays a tape recording because it had been taped by a private detective. Yeah. And he goes, one of those heavy breathers is you, Your Honor. And I go, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm like, no. And then they go, uh, and, and tell us about, all, uh, what was her name? I forget. Vicki Oliver or something. I go, she wasn't my therapist. And, and uh, McGarrett says, what was she? And I go, she's my madam. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> right, cut to co commercial. Uh, uh, so that was a fun one. And I did two on Lost, which was great because Lost yeah. was uh, uh, good show. in 200 countries. It was yes. the largest syndication Lost, good show. television show. Yeah, I, I, in season one, I played a doctor who tells yeah. Jack that his father uh, killed a pregnant woman. Right. In the peer review scene, if those, right. those Losties, if any are watching, they'll, they'll know that scene because I said you were. Losties? You mean people that watch that show called Losties? I watch The Bachelor, so what am I? You're I'm a, a bachelorette. Bachelor. <laughs> you're, a ba yeah, you're a bachelorette, yeah. But we won't go there. Anyway, so, uh, and then in season three, I played a, um, um, I played a priest. I got to marry the beautiful Kate. Evangeline <laughs> Lilly, who's only five feet tall. She was a model. So, player. so Mark, it's pretty clear to me that in just having met you in the last half hour, you actually take on the roles of all these characters as you go through life. So when you tell people you're a doctor, they go, oh, what do you mean? You played a doctor. You're not a real doctor. Uh, I want to ask you about somebody that, that, that uh, uh, folks, I, I love to drop names, and I love to drop the names of the people I know. But in my opinion, there's one name in, that can out outmatch any other, and that would be uh, Stephen King, uh, the most prolific author of all time in the history of the world. You, uh, uh, Mighty John, are friends with Stephen. I mean, you guys are, are, are pals. Yes, well, <clears throat> I'm here with my lawyer and my psychiatrist, so anything I say is privilege. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, uh, but, but, but what I like was your story about how he wanted you, he wanted you to help him uh, write a character for his, uh, his book, and the other thing is, he did an article about you in Playboy magazine, which made you the most famous disc jockey in the country at <laughs> the time. It was done in what year was that? Uh, 81 or 82. 81. I and I remember at the time, all of us who knew you said, uh, Mighty John is in Playboy magazine. And you became... With his clothes on. 
Uh, right, and you yeah. became. With, Thank God, <laughs> with, he wasn't the centerfold. That's this, what I. That's what I'm so glad. With his clothes on, but you were you were essentially made famous by that, and then Stephen King started buying radio stations. Uh, yeah, well, I met him. You know, people always ask me, "What's what's he really like?" Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you, "What's he really like?" And the first thing that always comes to my mind is that he is a wonderful family man. Oh, there you go. It always impressed me yes. how well he treated his family oh, and how much he really loves something. his family. And that it, says a lot. Yeah, and I, that always impressed me. And also the fact that whether you were a famous movie star or a D actor uh, <laughs> or, or maybe a student at the, the a fast elevation. food right. restaurant, uh, he treats you the same. Yes. With respect and very right. polite. So no matter yeah. who you are, He'll treat you equally. I saw him on Stephen Colbert the other night, and I was so impressed because he was talking about his problems with the governor of Florida, and we all know that uh, Stephen's a liberal, good friends with John Baldacci. Uh, uh, by the way, I did an event uh, for Warren Silva, and Stephen King was sitting right beside me, and I said, Stephen, you use my name in your books. Derry is used all. Do I, do I get a, a, a royalty from that? And Stephen goes, let me think. No. And then, uh, uh, but I have always been impressed with his... Uh, how how humble he is about yes, this. Right. Now he's a, 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 a we know likely a billionaire. I, I guess we would say without much question, and yet uh, he is he is so generous uh, yeah. to 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 his community uh, and to uh, the university and and um, but you 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 you, you see him a fair amount of time. Well, I haven't seen him in a long time. I email him now and then. Yeah, he's out which is which is the way we connect with people. Yeah, these days. and uh, well, people he'll say if you ask him. What are you really like? <laughs> He'll say the same thing. He'll always say, I have the heart of a small boy. And it's he a jar on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I have the heart of a small boy. It's a jar on my desk. So, you know what, what blows my mind about him yeah. is that my brother went to college with him also. Yeah. And, and so people knew him from the University of Maine that sure. were up there. And you tell a story about him coming in and watching you do your disc jockey thing. You'd come in and play the records. And, yeah. And, and, and so he's sitting there in the corner. And, and Mighty, as you're standing there, do you, do you now look back in time and say, I'm looking at the most famous author other than Shakespeare of all time? Well, no, at the time he was... Uh, just a guy. Just a guy. He'd come in with the tabby, his wife. And they'd nurse a beer, maybe have yeah. a, one beer just to share between them. Yeah. He had no money. And I was playing at a place called the Outside Inn. Yes. And I'd play uh, 50s and 60s rock and roll, which right. he loves. Yes. And so he'd come up and sit in the corner. I never knew him at the time. Uh, he reminded me of it later on when right. we get to know each other. But uh, <sighs> people always ask me, how do I get to interview Stephen King? The answer is, you can't. The, no, the easiest way is... Say so you don't want to interview him. Turn him down. Because <laughs> that's how I met him. I turned him down. That's, I'll try that. Yeah. Why can't. don't you call him on the phone and say, guess what, Stephen? <laughs> Gary Runnett doesn't want you coming anywhere close to that show. Mark, i got to ask you, uh, because we're dropping celebrity names, and it's one of my favorite games to play. Surely, give me one of your favorite celebrity stories, some of that you met. Uh, you have already, you've already put down Alex Trebek. How about talking yeah. nice about somebody? <laughs> okay, I'll talk nice about him. Uh, Robert Conrad. Oh, my okay. God, yes, uh, okay. Uh, it was in uh, Wild Wild West. Yes, and, uh, love that show. Uh, well, the um, good friend of mine, uh, one of my acting coaches, a guy named Garrison True, he's in California now, uh, best known as the casting director for Annie, uh, yes. the movie. He, I, I said, you deserve a place in heaven, Garrison, because he had to listen to 10,000 redheaded girls sing tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow. But it was the largest casting search since... Um, uh, Scarlett O'Hara. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, my, that's a, that's a, he did that. He also did uh, one of the first miniseries, um, uh, Centennial, that yes. back in the 70s. I remember and that. And so, anyway, Garrison was very, uh, it became a, like a, what we call in Hawaii, a calabash, uh, which is not a real uncle to my daughters. Yeah. He, he never had kids of his own. So he, he'd spent Christmas with us, I think, for 10 years. He spent every Christmas with us. But anyway, very nice guy. But anyway, he had uh, cast uh, in Centennial, uh, uh, Richard Chamberlain uh, of Dr. Kildare fame yes. and um, uh, Bob Conrad. They, yes. they were early in the thing. They were French fur traders. Right. And uh, so anyway, so I, um, uh, in my youth, when I, my hair was brunette, 
Uh, I looked like Conrad. I mean, uh, uh, I was someone like him. So I, I and uh, no, more than one person. I told just, me that. I just watched Mighty John roll his eyes. Oh yeah, because he, yeah. Well, I mean, he's so uh, fugly that. I, yeah, yeah, me and George uh, Clooney too. Like People yeah. look like George Clooney. Cheney is what yeah. he looks like. But anyway, so anyway, so I, uh, so so I, I went up and I mean, I said more than one person did that. So I went up to him and um, at a cocktail party and and Garrison introduced us and I said, you know, Mr. Conrad, I said. Uh, People say that uh, we look, uh, uh, I used to look like you, and they go, he goes, well, we do have a similar look, Mark, but you're taller. He was 5'6". That's right. I remember he was short. Oh, he was short. Yeah, Yeah, like many actors are. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. that reminds me of a a childhood uh, joke up in Dover Foxcroft. Um, Who was the tallest president? And the kid would say Abraham Lincoln. They go, no, he was shot. No, no, oh, it's not short. Yeah. Well, hey, you're the one with an accent. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> he was shot. <laughs> shot. Uh, yeah. By the, by the way, folks, uh, uh, Mark and I have one other uh, thing in common. We have many things in common, we found out. But I went to Orono High School, and Orono High School uh, uh, never lost any track meet, basketball game, or football game to Dover Foxcroft in 62 years. <laughs> I don't think that's the truth. I just made it up. Uh, you just made it up because in 1967, we were a class D yes. state champ. There you go. And we were in 1961. But I, I do recall with great fondness. And by the way, my minister at uh, my church, my former minister, my pastor, her name is Ruth Morrison. And I'm going to call her and tell her that I mentioned her name so she can watch the show. Ruth is from Dover Foxcroft, and she is one of the finest pastors I've ever known. And when she told me she was from Dover, I said, Ruth, I'm sure I saw you. I'm sure I would have seen you in the stands, a cheerleader or something. She was, I wasn't a cheerleader. Well, a major rat, whatever. She was, I wasn't a major rat. <laughs> I said, well, Bob, you played on the other team, football, whatever. But uh, Dover Foxcroft, we, we loved that rivalry because you, you, you were a school of honor, I recall. Well, well-respected well uh, athletes that we, uh, that we used to play against back in those days. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, not yeah. that he was ever Not that athlete. I was. No. Not that you were. Did you play sports? Uh, no, play? horizontal gymnastics, basically. What's that? Horizontal gymnastics. Oh, <laughs> you wanted me to bring him. Yeah, I know. Listen. I know. You said that. Uh, okay. I want to get back to you, Mighty John. Um, so now you have a new, a new profession. That, uh, and you now, <laughs> folks, this is an interesting profession. Uh, you are able to put a value on L- LP records, the old vinyl records, right? I mean, and you go on air all over the country. With well, for the last 25 years I've been doing this. And I've been over on over five thousand different radio shows. Five thousand? What? Five thousand. Five thousand stations. And you go to my website, moneymusic.com. <laughs> Money music. Money music. Yeah. And you can find the value of any record that you have. A lot of people don't realize the big money that's in old records from especially from the fifties and sixties. Yes. And so I tell them. I do the radio show, people call up and say, Well, I've got this Rolling Stones record. Can right, you tell right. me what it's worth? And I tell them what it's worth, and then I send them to my website to buy my little Jam and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but, but what I, what, how did how did you uh, manage to get into this? How did you manage to even uh, get into this business? Well, I was doing it all my life, record collecting. Okay. And when I got into radio and became program director, so many records came my way. Yes. And at that time, I knew they were worth money, and I knew what was going to be worth money. So I hoarded all the records, especially those not for sale, promotional copy. Do not remove from radio station. Oh, oh my God. I removed them all. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we've admitted to watch seven crimes on this show. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, it's, well, you know, people always say that. Can you, say, can you sell something that says not for sale? I said, yes. You know why? Because the record companies sent them to the radio stations. Yeah. You didn't ask for them. Yeah. So anything that somebody sends you in the mail yeah. that you don't ask for, they've given it to you. Un- it's unsolicited, it's yes. Yours. Yeah, and so yes, you that's uh, that's law school 101. And I always wanted to be the guy <laughs> in the police blotter arrested for selling a promotional record or pulling the tab off a mattress. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, you spend uh, most of your winters in Hawaii. That's that's you. Yeah, that's I, I, curse, I noticed yeah. he's got. Except you got a Las Vegas shirt on. You got a Hawaiian shirt that says Las Vegas. I know. I know. You you saw that. My you must have won that. You must have won that at the Bellagio, right? <laughs> I think my wife won it. She's a poker player. Uh, but, but you uh, also uh, have a summer in Maine, right near my house in Cape Elizabeth. You live yeah. right, right up the street. Yeah. And uh, how do you like Hawaii? Is that like the, the most greatest state in, uh, to live in, in, well, in the world uh, ever? I, I can tell you there's, there's real problems. We only got a minute. So go ahead. Okay, okay. Sure. Yeah. The, the biggest problem 
is the high cost of living. High cost. Oh, my gosh. Higher yeah. than Maine? Oh, Higher than Cape oh, 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 Lord. They really? call it the paradise tax. Yeah. It's like, it's. I think latest calculated was 34%. So, in other words, to make 100000 in Maine equivalent, you'd have to make 134000 in Hawaii. You're going to make it down to 30%. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, uh, uh, everything has to be imported. 85% of the food is imported. Right. A loaf of bread is seven bucks. What? Uh, no, I'm not kidding you. Uh, it's, uh, what, I, I first went there in 1974. Quickly, uh, Paps Blue Ribbon, I was a med student, was 88 cents on the mainland. There it was $1.28. I go, oh, my Lord, $1.28 for a six-pack. <laughs> that was 1974. But yeah. no, uh, the, the, and the politics are bad. There's only one, it's only one party state. It's all Dems. It could be all Republicans. I don't care. But yeah. there's, there's no transparency. There's a lot of corruption. But, really? Uh, but yeah. Well, but they are Dems. <laughs> but anyway, the thing is, I just love being there because thank, so. thank you, Rudy Giuliani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Donald J. over here. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you some uh, folks. Uh, what a pleasure it has been to have you because first of all, I have shows where the the the, the, the conversation's serious. We're talking about serious topics, uh, and then you two come on and turn this half hour literally into five minutes. I couldn't believe it. He came over and said, t- 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 "We've got the three minutes." Uh, b- before we end. Uh, John, give us again your website for your for your music. Website moneymusic.com. Moneymusic.com. We'll put out price uh, guides. And, we'll and, tell you the and, 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 and Mark, we know that you are sort of still practicing. You were a forensic uh, psychologist. Psychiatrist. By, uh, psychiatrist, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, my God. Trist, not a gist. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah. And so um, uh, you're still doing some practice, right? Right. But I said your viewers, of any, uh, if you've got any, uh, should go to YouTube and type in my name, yes. Mark Statham, okay. and you'll see my wedding scene from Lost, season three. That, that I do want to see. Okay, just from go to YouTube, Lost and, Mark. So, have you ever walked down the street and 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 people actually recognize you and say they think they've seen One you? One time in Hawaii, somebody at a shopping mall said, "You are the Jeopardy champion." Oh That's my the God! Only really? Time. That's the only time. Yeah, because I, I, I have to tell you that when I had uh, Jeopardy Jamie on my yeah. show, this, uh, on my other show, Me on Five, uh, I, I said to her, I said, you know, so many people watch that show. Uh, and, you know, I met, once met Merv Griffin uh, at a wedding. Uh, my ex-girlfriend married a, a movie uh, star from, from Hollywood, Charles Hayde, Renko and Hill Street Blues. Oh, yeah. and, and I oh, met yeah. Merv Griffin. Uh, and I sat right next to him at the wedding, one, one of the finest men I've ever met in a short period of time. He was so, uh, such a wonderful man. Anyway, we're wrapping up. This is the Derry Runlet Show. We'll see you next month. And uh, Mighty John, Mark, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you.